Greetings and salutations to you all once again. It is me, the Ravenous Spectre, and this is the next exciting episode in the Journey Onward series. Ooh. Yeah, whatever. Halloween's already over. I figured I would just add in that little pizzazz. You know, just... <laughs> Anyways, um, this is... This is basically a video series that I put out each week dealing with my week in gaming. And this week has pretty much been the same as last week. Pretty much dealing with uh, Skyrim and uh, Final Fan World of Final Fantasy. <laughs> Can't get it all out. Been making some progress in World of Final Fantasy. Um, I really don't know how long it is, but to me, honestly, it's kind of getting a bit repetitive. I mean, I'm liking it. I'm appreciate what it's trying to do. I, you know, and all of that, this, that, and the other. Um, but overall, it's just, it's kind of getting to me a bit. Granted, I am going to play it. I am going to finish it at some point. But the way I kind of feel about it right now is just getting a bit repetitive, honestly. And I'm just kind of taking a step back from it and realizing, well, while I really did like this to begin with, it's not really my cup of tea at this point, I guess, because there's other big name games that are, that are coming out. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I remember I mentioned before about Watch Dogs 2. I really don't think I'm going to get that on day one. I see other gameplay footage, and it seems to me really like it's like the first game, but there's just some extra things added in. Well, duh. But it's just, I guess, the overall tone and... The area that it's set in and just the characters as well just aren't grabbing me or anything like that. So I think I'm really just going to hold off on that. Um, at some point I will get it and I will play it. But right now it's just it's honestly not really on my radar. Uh, probably the next real big game that I'm really interested in, in getting into is obviously Final Fantasy XV. I am so ready for this. Like beyond all belief I'm just going to stay up like all fucking night probably just playing this damn thing. You know, if anybody disturbs me, I'm just going to pile drive them to a fucking table. It's, ah! You know, I'm just excited for it, you know, and and um, I'm just, God, I'm so ready for it. Uh, you know, I uh, just fuck the naysayers and all the naysaying about the game. It's going to be fucking great. Everybody's going to be eating their words. They're going to eat some humble pie and realize it's going to be freaking amazing. It's going to be one of the greatest fucking Final Fantasies ever. They're going to put it on the list, man. They're going to put it on the freaking list. I just freaking know it. But anyways, with that aside, I can't wait for that. And uh, did pick up a new game, got Dishonored 2. And honestly, I kind of forgot that it was actually coming out the day that it was supposed to. I thought it was supposed to come out actually today, as a matter of fact, on a Friday. But I guess it must have came out on Tuesday. I don't know how I got my dates mixed up. I think it had to boil down to the fact that the NES Classic came out today, which everybody is just trying to scalp people on eBay. Fuck you, scalpers. That's exactly what they're trying to do, man. It's crazy to me. It's really crazy to me because I was hoping to get an NES Classic today. Still, still trying to work on that situation. But Nintendo never meets supply and demand. They don't. They just, from my experience, from my knowledge... They never meet supply and demand. They have such a high demand for their products, but they never put out enough. They never put out an, an excess amount, an extra amount to be able to, to meet this demand. And people go and, and buy these things in bulk, which, you know, I think is fucking stupid because it's like, oh, I'm gonna, we're going to go and just rip people off, you know, of, of such a, a low supply of an item and just go and sell it to these people and then have them turn around and try to make a profit off of, off of on eBay. I ended, I ended up finding out that people are selling it for like thousands and thousands of dollars online. I saw one, I saw one that was like three hundred and fifty dollars. Another one that was like ten thousand dollars. You ever put that up there? You are a fucking moron. And whoever buys it is a fucking moron. There's no chance in hell that I would ever go and buy something that is sixty dollars brand new. Paying ten grand for something that I know, I know, if you have some freaking patience, I know that there's going to be a whole lot more that's going to come out once Nintendo starts putting more out. You have to develop patience. With all the gaming and everything that's going on on, on right on, I can't even fucking talk, that's going on right now and out there in the world, if you're that dumb and stupid to go and charge ten grand, and somebody else is that dumb and stupid to go and pay that much, then both of you were meant for each other. That's all I've got to say. Because that is ridiculous and fucking stupid beyond all belief. So, since I'm kind of off on that, <laughs> you know, because fuck scalpers, I just, I, I can't, I can't, I just, I can't freaking believe it. I can't. 
There, there is as much of a gamer as I am. There is no freaking way in hell that I would ever pay any more than it's worth, and that is a fact. I don't care if I never get the item. I don't care if I have to wait a few weeks, few months, few years down the line to get the item. There's no chance in hell. No chance. Yeah, that's what you got. No chance in hell. This is a man's theme. No chance in hell that I would ever end up paying any more for an item than what it's worth. So that's my two cents on it. Um, but yeah, I'm still looking at, still looking out to get one of those because obviously that's a real hot button item, obviously for this holiday season without a shadow of a doubt. And, and I don't, I don't doubt it. I, I don't doubt it at all, you know, and I have, obviously I have nothing against the consumer because that's just good for Nintendo for them to make money and be able to sell these products and whatnot. It's good for them. And it's also good for the consumer for them to get this nice little collector. As far as, far as I'm concerned, it's a nice little collector's item. Um, it, you know, it has nothing to do with the consumer. It just has to deal with Nintendo, how they don't meet they don't meet these standards. If they if they knew that their first supply sold as fast as it did, then don't you think you should probably triple that amount, if not quadruple that amount, however much amounts you need to have to be able to, to have more out there for people to buy? It's just money in your pocket, Nintendo. You know, it just, ah, uh, it just kind of gets to me. But eventually, I'm going to end up finding one, and I'm going to get one. I got so much other stuff I'm playing right now. It doesn't really bother me to the point like, I gotta have it right now. I gotta pay $10,000 to have a fucking NES Classic. You're a fucking moron. You know, I just, oh my God. I, I, I hope nobody buys it. I hope nobody, and I really, I really hope that it's a person like pulling a joke or a prank or But if you're putting it on eBay, you're still fucking stupid for putting it up there for that price. And whoever buys it is fucking stupid. So that's my two cents on it. I wouldn't even care if I was rich. It's just it's just the, the fact of the matter, man. It's the whole moral standpoint. That's not there's no morals in that for going and selling it at that price and then somebody's stupid enough to go and buy it. Oh, it's just the, the overall situation is fucked up. Um but anyways, um Getting back to what I was trying to say about what I was doing this week in gaming before I went off on a rant, which is what I'm good at at times. But hey, you just have to get it out and you got to talk about it because everybody in the world does it since the beginning of freaking time. Um, but the um, game that I got was Dishonored 2, like I mentioned before. Um, I ended up getting it yesterday, as a matter of fact, because I thought it wasn't going to be out until today, and I was checking to see if there was going to be a midnight release next last lap. <laughs> <laughs> there was going to be a midnight release last night. But when I called and they told me, they said, oh, well, it's already here. I'm like, really? I was like, yeah, we can sell it now. I'm like, okay. So I went ahead, went and picked it up, bought it, and uh, got it home, played it for like five and a half hours straight. Just was really loving it. I, I love I love how it has a more realistic look to it. You know, it has that steampunk kind of look to it. A more realistic, like, sci-fi fantasy type feel to it. You know, that whole mixture of sci-fi and fantasy, whatever you want to say. And I really like it. The graphics are a heck of a lot more impressive. The gameplay still seems the same to me. It kind of still feels the same, which is good. I mean, you obviously want to have certain components and mechanics from previous games in the series, which is only one anyways. To, to bring that over so people can be familiar with it that's played the other ones in the series. And so the fact is, is it's just, I love how you can play as two different characters. You can play as Corvo or Emily, which I'm playing first as Emily because the way the story is playing out and the, the, what we've heard about it, it just seems like it makes sense for me to play as her first, considering it's basically her story. And then I'll go back and play as Corvo. And from what I've heard, there is reason to go back and play through it again for a second time because of the different routes and things you can take. And like I believe that from what I've heard, the cutscenes are different. And I, be I believe both of them have two different types of power or skill trees or something like that. From what I've seen from Emily, yeah, she has some new ones on there. But it seems like there's still some of the same ones that Corvo had in the first one. And even though there's skill trees that you can go th through, and there's, it seems like there's more... Um, little nodes or something that you can go to on each skill tree to be able to have a little bit more in-depth way of progressing with your powers. You know, if you choose to do powers, because at the beginning of the game, actually I believe they did this in the first game as well, you can choose to not use any powers at all, which seems boring as fuck to me. So I went obviously went ahead and did powers. Um, but, the, but people are like, oh, well, it's just about the challenge. Okay, well, you can have your challenge. 
Um, have your challenge and eat it too, or have your cake and eat it too, or just whatever. Um, but yeah, honestly, I'm really digging it, really enjoying it for sure. Uh, you know how the first one had that comic book kind of style to it, that cell shady comic booky kind of look, which was really cool. But it seems like now it takes more of a realistic kind of look and feel to it, but the character designs kind of look the same, like the character models and whatnot, but they have more of a fleshy, uh, look, if you will, more of a realistic kind of look instead of, uh, comic booky, cell shady, cartooniness kind of thing, which I really love the visual style of the first one, and I love this one even more. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely awesome. Always been a Dishonored uh, fan without a shadow, of a shadow of a doubt. So definitely when I get off of work tonight, I'm going to go home and play it some more. Um, but anyways, one of the main things that kind of pisses me off in that game is blood flies. You remember in the first game we had rats? Well, now we're basically dealing with blood flies. I think we still deal with rats, but I hate the blood flies so much more. I can't stand the sound of them. I can't stand the net, their nests. I can't stand how they, because you have to basically sneak by them. You have to sneak by them and be crouched for you to not get attacked by them because if they start to glow, that lets you know they're trying to defend their nest. You have to destroy their nest and then destroy them because if you just try to destroy them and not destroy their nest, well, you're not going to destroy them. And basically, fire is one of the best things that you can use. So if you find something flammable or you have like a flammable uh, bolt or something, then that's what you need to do. Or if you have a gun, just shoot the damn thing down. Um, but yeah, I, oh God, ooh. They just, they get to me. I can't stand bugs anyways, especially flying bugs. And these things just irk me. I can't stand to hear them. I can't stand to fight them. They're just, ugh, you know. So anyways, I think they're worse than the rats, honestly. I mean, I could deal with the rats because the rats don't fly. These damn things fly. So yeah, um, you can get away from the rats, but <laughs> these motherfuckers want to fly everywhere. And when they get a whole lot of them, that's when they really attack you. But if you kill some of them off, it's like they'll kind of fly away, you know. That's what they've done with me. They haven't attacked me or anything. Um, but anyways, damn, this is a long one. That's what she said. It's a long uh, vlog here for a uh, thingy, whatever. But anyways, I'll go ahead and end this now. You guys definitely check out those games that I mentioned before and everything else that I checked out and whatnot. And definitely end up giving uh, Dishonored 2 a go because it's, it's really awesome. It's freaking awesome. I truly love it. I think it's a... A great addition to the series and some people have been saying like oh well there's glitches and whatnot and pc has had more problems than console has at least from what i've read and even console has been having problems as well but luckily that hasn't been the case with me i actually played it a little bit before the patch completely downloaded and then i restarted it again with the patch haven't had any problems since so hopefully that won't happen with me i'm pretty sure there'll probably be more patches that come along which makes me think i wonder why they just didn't go ahead and just just take the time and delay it and fix it and make it better and run much better. And when they finally released it, they didn't have to worry about this crap. That just gets to me, but I'm pretty sure they want to do it for the holiday money. You know, the holidays are rolling in, so they want to be able to try to make as much money as possible and, and whatnot, because it's the big time for games, obviously, near the end of the year. So that's, that's just my two cents on it. But I hope, I just really hope that, that you know, that there won't be too many more patches, especially for PC. But PC, from what I've heard, is having the most problems, but Xbox One and PS4 are also experiencing problems as well. Hope that doesn't happen with me. Hope I don't have to experience no crashes or nothing like that. If I do, I hope the damn thing is already saved. Because uh, there's a quick save to it in the game as well that wasn't in the first one, I don't think, which is really good. So all well and good there. I'll quick save a lot, save a lot if anything happens, you know, because it auto-saves as well. So... Anyways, all well and good. So, I'll end this like I always do. Later, taters. Damn, I'm tired. I gotta go get something to drink now. My damn saliva's all out of my damn mouth. Bye.